risk analysis is showing that if you send students back in some of these high risk areas, in a class of just 15, there is several public health units where there is greater than a one in eight chance that someone in that class has an active case of COVID-19. Do you think schools have been a driving force in the spread of COVID? I absolutely think schools have been a driving force for COVID-19 here in Ontario and also worldwide. We have seen worldwide that when you move schools to online, you drastically reduce cases. The only, the only like other thing that we have seen that has also brought down cases like this has been to reduce gathering sizes. So schools and reducing gathering sizes are the two things that you can do in order to reduce COVID-19 transmission. Do you think the government failed in not starting asymptomatic school testing in schools right away, like right back in September? They absolutely failed by not doing this. This was um, very, very simple to do. And back in August, we actually had testing capacity here in Ontario. We were actively testing people and we were only finding roughly one of every 300 people actually had an active case of COVID-19. We had testing capacity to do asymptomatic testing back in August, and then we refused to. When you refuse to look for cases, you're not gonna find cases. When you don't find cases, you're not going to figure out where the spread is actually coming from. And we know that the spread is coming from COVID-19 in schools, and that is brought there with students. Now, even though students may not be symptomatic when it comes to COVID-19, they are still able to pass this on to other people. So despite being asymptomatic, you can still pass it on to other people, and that's the primary concern. If we have a lockdown here in Ontario, and we allow students to go back to school, we're gonna have spread from house to house because school will be the vector for that spread. If we have 20% of kids who are symptomatic being tested and being positive, what does that say overall about how many kids there are who might be asymptomatic as well? It means that there is many, many asymptomatic cases. When we did asymptomatic testing at Thorncliffe, we found that 4% of the students there had the COVID-19. We found in the like, community, the actual positivity rate was 16%. So roughly four times as many people are gonna test positive with symptoms than exist asymptomatic cases. So you could roughly assume that if we have 20% of students with symptoms testing positive for COVID-19, using that like data from Thorncliffe, where you had positivity rates that were very, very high, it's not unreasonable to think that we may have up to 5% of Ontario students in high risk zones with cases of COVID-19, many of those asymptomatic. And we know that COVID is spreading even beyond the high risk zones, that it is, it is fully out in the community right now. So what does that mean? Yeah. We definitely know that. And I think when we look back to Windsor, when they were one of the first areas that, that actually did asymptomatic testing, Windsor was doing asymptomatic testing and they were finding cases in the school. They found 50 cases in one school of just over 400 students. And that was when Windsor did not have a lot of COVID-19 spread. So in areas now where we're seeing COVID-19 spread, just imagine how many cases there would be if we sent students back to school next week. Okay. How long do you think schools should be closed? I don't think we should place a limit on how long schools are shut for. I think what we've shown as a society that we're able to like, tolerate schools being open if we have a thousand cases or less here in Ontario, and we have a somewhat reasonable positivity rate of around 3%. If we have a positivity rate here in Ontario of 10%, and we're seeing more than 3000 cases, that is not an acceptable amount to send students back. If we send students back again, where we're seeing roughly 1000 daily cases and a 3% positivity rate, and we have a good testing regime, we should be able to send students back at that time and not worry that, we're, that we will then have to shut down schools again within four weeks. What we don't wanna do is send students back to school prematurely and then have to do this exact same thing again for a longer amount of time four weeks later.